Example 1. Confidence interval for estimating the mean of the differences between measured weights and recorded weights of males. It is common belief that if you ask someone how much they weigh, you tend to get a number that is somewhat lower than the number that you would get by using a scale to actually weigh them. Listed below are the measured and reported weights in pounds of random male subjects. Construct a 90% confidence interval estimate of the population mean of the differences which is the mean of the differences between the measured weights and the reported weights of males. By using a confidence level of 90%, we get a result that could be used for the previous hypothesis test. Because the hypothesis test is one-tailed with a significance level of 0.05, the confidence level should be 90%. So here's our table. We can see here that the second row here is the measured weight in pounds and then we have the reported weight in pounds. So the first thing we want to do in step number one is to find the differences between the measured weight and the reported weight. So one way of doing that is is that you have again our two our, th our second and third row which is the measured weight and the reported weight. You want to add an additional row for the differences. So what we're going to do is the following. We're going to take the value of the measured weight which is 152.6 and then we're going to subtract the reported weight of 150 to get the difference of 2.6. We're going to continue to do that for the next uh, seven. So we have 149.3, subtract 148 to get the difference of 1.3. We take 174.8, subtract 170 to get the difference of 4.8. We take 119.5 and then subtract 119 to get the difference of 0 0.5. 194.9, subtract 185 to get the difference of 9.9. Get 180.3, subtract 180 to get the difference of 0 0.3. 215.4, subtract 224 to get the difference of negative 8.6 and then 239.6 subtract 239 to get the difference of 0 0.6. Okay now our goal now is to use this last column for the differences and we want to be able to find the sample size of that which there are eight and then the mean and the standard deviation. So another way of being able to do this is to use StatCrunch. So let's go ahead and do that. So in StatCrunch we're going to go ahead and create two different columns. We can see the first column, I put in measured weight and I entered in the values. And then the reported weight and I put in those values. You want to make sure you put them in the correct order because you have to find the difference of the first one, measured weight and the, the reported weight. So in order to do that, we want to create a formula. So we're going to go to data and then we're going to select compute and then we're going to go to an expression because you want to be able to build an expression to find the differences between those two. So we select expression and then here we're going to go ahead and select build and then what we're going to do is in the columns here we're going to select the measured weight first, we're going to select subtract and then now select the reported weight and then plus OK. Now here in the column label we want to call that difference because that's a difference between those and now select compute. So let's go ahead and check to make sure this is correct. We can see we get a difference of 2.6, 1.3, 4.8, 0.5, 9.9, 0.3, -8.6, -6. So now what this allows us to do is now in step two is to find the sample size, the mean of the differences, and the standard deviation of the differences using StatCrunch. So let's go ahead and open that back up. So now we're going to look at this column here. We're going to go to stat, select summary stats, and then go to columns. And now the column that we want to select is the difference that we just made. And now we want to select n, which is the sample size, the mean, and the standard deviation. And then select compute. And there are our values. So let's go ahead and take a look at those values. Okay, so we get the following. We see that the sample size is 8. We get the mean difference of 1.425, which is D with a line over it. 
and then the standard deviation of the differences rounded to six decimal places is 5.181216. Okay, now we need to take a look at the requirements. First thing of the requirements is, is that the data are matched pairs because each pair of values is from the same subject. Number two, the pairs of data are randomly selected, so we will consider the data to be a simple random sample. And then number three, because of the number of pairs of data is n is equal to eight, it is not large. So we should check for normality of the differences, and we should check for outliers. In order to do that, we're going to use StatCrunch to construct the histogram and the normal quantile plot of the differences. So let's go ahead and put that back up. So again, we're focusing on the column for differences. We're going to go to graph, scroll to histogram. And so we want to select the column for difference, and then we want the frequency type, and then select compute. Now we don't see any outliers, but let's go ahead and then look at that histogram. So this doesn't show any outliers here. Okay, and now let's create the QQ plot, or the normal quantile plot. So we're going to go to graph, scroll all the way down to where it says QQ plot. Make sure we select our column for difference. And then enter and select the horizontal lines and vertical lines. And select compute. And now we see what the normal quantile plot looks like. Okay, so therefore we can see that there are no outliers and the normal quantile plot shows the points approximate a straight line pattern with no other pattern. So the differences satisfy the loose requirement of being from a normally distributed population. Therefore, all requirements are satisfied. Now let's move on to step four. So for step four, we want to be able to find the critical value. Now again, going back to the problem, we determined that we're constructing a 90% confidence interval. So we first need to find the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is taking the sample size of eight, subtracting one, which is equal to seven. And the claim is that the measure weights tend to be higher than the reported weights can be tested with a 0.05 significance level and constructing a 90% confidence interval. So we're going to take alpha, which is 1 minus 0 0.90, which gives us 0 0.10. And then we need to take alpha and divide that by 2. So 0 0.10 divided by 2 gives us 0 0.05. So what we're looking for is the critical T value that is located in the right tail. So let's go ahead and open up StatCrunch. We're going to go to Stat select calculators and since this is a t distribution we're going to use the t calculator so in our t calculator we're going to go ahead and put in the degrees of freedom to be seven we know it's the right tail so we want to make sure that this is greater than or equal to and then we're going to put in the area of 0 0.05 and then select compute now here is our critical value our t critical value rounded to three decimal places which is going to be 1.895 so therefore, the critical T value is going to be 1.895. So now that we have our critical T value, we can find the margin of error E that corresponds to a 90% confidence interval with the following. We know the critical T value is 1.895. We know the sample size is equal to 8. And the sample standard deviation is 5.181216. So let's go ahead and substitute this information into our formula. So again, the critical T value is 1.895. We see that the sample size is 8. And we see that the standard deviation of the differences is 5.181216. So let's go ahead and do this on our calculator. So we take 1.895, and we're going to multiply it by the numerator there of 5.1. 181216 press enter and then we're going to divide that by the square root of 8 and therefore rounding that to six decimal places 
we get 3.471330. Okay, now that we found our margin of error, now we can go ahead and then find a 90% confidence interval estimate of the mean of the differences between measured weights and recorded weights of males with the following. So the mean of the differences that we found at the beginning is 1.425, and we just found the margin of error to be 3.471330. So we're going to go ahead and plug it into our confidence interval formula. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. On the lower limit, we're going to take the mean of 1.425, and then we're going to subtract the margin of error, which is 3.471330. On the right side, again, we're going to take the mean of the differences and we're going to add the margin of error. So let's just go ahead and put that on our calculator to make sure that we're correct here. So we're going to take 1.425 and then we're going to subtract 3.471.3301. Okay, and then, then we're going to go ahead and then if I enter this and then put in the plus sign before I hit enter, I now can add that to get those two values. So we're going to get the following. We get negative 2.046330 for the lower limit, and we get 4.896330 for the upper limit. And so now we're going to go ahead and round that to two decimal places. So we get negative 2.05 pounds for the lower limit and 4.90 pounds for the upper limit. Now we want to be able to state the conclusion. Now, the confidence interval limit does contain zero, which is the mean difference. So because that number zero is in between those two numbers, suggesting that it is very likely that the population mean of the difference is equal to zero, so it is very possible that the mean of the differences is equal to zero pounds, indicating that there is no sufficient difference between measured weights and reported weights. Therefore, we are 90% confident that the limits of negative 2.05 pounds and 4.90 pounds contain the true value of the mean of the measured minus reported differences. In the long run, 90% of such samples will lead to confidence interval limits that actually do contain the true population mean of those differences. In the last part of this section, we can just talk about this. There's alternative methods for this where you're using resampling methods of bootstrapping and randomization. The claim that the measured weights of males tend to be higher than the reported weights can be tested by using the resampling methods of bootstrapping and randomization.